Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned, greatly sinned in my in thoughts, my thoughts and, and in my words, words in what, in what I, have I have done, in what, in what I, have I have failed to do. To do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days, when by your gift we have it more we have known it more fully that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian Enoch, a court official of the Kandas, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with a chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the Enoch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the Enoch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the Enoch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, 
the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the Enoch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let us I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that came, that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning to all of you. And we thank God for the gift of life He has bestowed upon our dear mother, May Catherine of Christ, as she celebrates her birthday today. And also, if I may add, a greeting also all those who are celebrating their birthdays on this very day. It is always a gift to have uh, someone, a person in our lives that are, shall we say, exemplifying uh, love. No? It's always uh, a gift. And motherly affections is also one of God's greatest gifts. In fact, God is, only, is not only Father, but He is also portrayed in the, in the prophets no? as, a, as a mother. So, every person who comes to our lives, who exhibits love and uh, gives love to us, is surely a gift from the Lord. And we thank God for 
for the gift of life, as I already mentioned, uh, and the gift of presence that he has uh, allowed us to experience with uh, Mother May Catherine of Christ. Now, let me have a reflection on the, on the, on the uh, first reading. And I was really uh, impressed by the, by the uh, part that says, and he proclaimed Jesus to him. He proclaimed Jesus to him. Which is true. One of our tasks is to proclaim Jesus. And there are many ways by which we proclaim the Lord. Either by our word or by our works. If we proclaim Jesus by our words, it should be manifested also in our works. And if we proclaim Jesus by our works, it has to be sustained by His Word. The Word and works of a proclaimer, of an evangelizer, should always go together. And the person whose words and works are agreeing with one another is a person of integrity. Ang tao, ngang iya pulong, Kagbuhat naga santo is most probably santo. Uh, I, I, I really love the Ilonggo language no? because just by mere inflection, you can already have a different meaning. I, I think also other languages have this, the same thing. Santo, kag santo. Tiyamoy na, sino ang santo? Ang santo nga tao, amo nga inang nga tao, ang iya pulong nagasanto sa iya nga buhat ang santo nga tawo yatong tawo nga ang iya pulong kag buhat nagasanto nagaangot and that is a person of integrity yesterday i was uh, looking at the at facebook you know, I'm very interesting. I'm very interested with uh, what's happening in the social media because of the uh, incoming, uh, very imminent election, which is we are going to have on on May May 9, correct? Monday. One of my friends in the, in Facebook posted this particular post, which which she actually reposted from from the from the post of Father uh, Pilario, if I'm not mistaken. Where in the, it says there, uh, if your priests, pastors, or religious leaders are teaching you to vote or endorsing to vote a thief, then you better change your religion. I am not really, I cannot verbatimly uh, recall it. Pero do mo na siya. Kung ang imo pastor, ang imo pari, o ang imo nga leader sa inyo reliyon, nagatudlo nga magbutos ang kandidato nga kawatan di mas maayo pa nga magbago ka sa imo reliyon it is interesting and then that particular post of hers really got a lot of comments this morning when i checked the <laughs> when i checked her post the exchange between her and one of her fb friends has already reached up to about 200, uh, 200 comments. Silly, <laughs> oh my God, this is really interesting. Okay, I'm not going to go into the merits of the of the post, but I'd just like to to enter into the into the philosophical perspective by which her opponent, if I may use that word, used. And what was that? Silly, mo niyo kaya mga pare gani ang mga obispo ang mga pastor makasasala man na sila kag makurap man na sila ti nga patiwon mo you see it seems seemingly correct pero pa mangkot ang masini is the veracity of what is being proclaimed based on the holiness of the preacher that is a very wrong concept. Kung magpati ka mo sa ako ginahambal, di tungod kay santo ako, for example, sana ka mo. Your faith 
is misdirected. And in fact, if you do that, you are guilty of a heresy, a Pilagian heresy. Nga nagasiling nga ang isa kabagay, for example, ang sakramento, wag inahiwat, balido lamang kung ang santo, uh, kung ang pari nga nagahimo sina nga sakramento santo. That's a heresy. So if you're going to tell me now, if you're going to argue with me, that, ah, di, namamatik agad sa mga pari na. Kay sila ganit mismo, mga kurap manada. Mm. Whether that uh, particular allegation is true or not, but take it as it is, then your faith is really misdirected. Because the veracity of what is being preached is on the word of God. The surety, the assurance, is not our personal holiness, but Jesus Christ. That is the surety of what of, of, of the of the veracity of what is being proclaimed. You see the point? Hindi niya na basi sa amo ng pagkasanto ah, o kung sa amo ng pagkaalam. No, the veracity. The truthfulness of what is being proclaimed is founded on Jesus Himself, not on, on the preachers. Of course, Paul VI said that this modern world would not only want teachers but also models, something like that. No? Nambal niya, nga ti, mas nami, magid nga, ang kalibutan subong, wala na nagapangita sang manunudlo kundi sa mga ihimplo man or witnesses, no? which means that Paul VI is trying to remind those who are in leadership, particularly in the church, that our words and our works should be connected to one another, it should agree with one another. But at the end of the day, taking into consideration human frailty, many of us will fail. But does it mean that what we are preaching is wrong? No. You stop believing if your pastor, your shepherd, I mean, or your priest, will teach you something which is really against the Word of God. If I will start preaching here, it's okay to steal, then don't listen to me. If I will start preaching that it's okay to commit adultery, then don't follow me because that is clearly wrong. But if I am just merely saying, for example, thou shalt not steal, love your neighbor as you love yourself, do not ask me immediately, how about you, Father? You see? That is a misdirected question because as I said, and I would like to repeat it again and again and I hope it goes, it register into your minds. The veracity of what is being taught is not based on the integrity of the preacher. It is based on Jesus himself, on his own holiness and integrity, in the divinity of Jesus, just as the gospel is telling us here. If we're going to follow, this is my second point. If we're going to follow that logic, yes, na post ang o po sa nag-comment, sa post ang kilala ko, tinanlan, kung ang muna gali, nga antis ang pari mag-preach, he must be holy, then it should also apply to all other professions. Okay, because you are actually putting down preaching of the Word of God into a profession. Tinanlan, kung ang muna siya, by, by logic, it should be consistent. Therefore, ang tanan nga mga nagatudlo sa business school, Sang management na klase, na kurso, should be good, excellent managers. Di ba lang? Kung hindi, kakabal, kung hindi ka namin ang manager, kung wala ka experience sa manager, as a manager, hindi ka matudlo. Kami. Hindi ka matudlo sa business school. Tiyay, sino mga teachers sa business school? Oh. Nga mga managers sila sa tanan. Are they, are they successful managers or entrepreneurs? Hindi kung magtudlo ka sa entrepreneurship, dapat ikaw nga teacher, you are the best entrepreneur also. Timian mo na. 
if you are going to teach mathematics, you should be very, very good in math. Tell me, mga teachers natin sa high school, for example, sa college, even in college, are they, are they mathematical geniuses? No, they're not. But why is it that we follow them? Precisely because the principles that they are teaching are correct. And the uh, most often example, no, which is already gas-gas na magiging example, but it's, it's still relevant. Kung ang doktor mo maghambal sa imo, nga untat ka panigarilyo. Ambal, kung sa doktor mo, untat te panigarilyo. Kaya ambal mo doktor mo nga, te doktor ka ikaw ka panigarilyo man. You see? You got my point. Okay, let me go back and I will end with this. You know this question of uh, ti, mga kurap mana, mga makasasala mana, mga mamati ka. Duga na yun issue. Saint John Chrysostom, when he was the bishop of Constantinople, the matrons of the city, yung mga donya sang siyudad, sang Constantinople at that time, nagreklamo sa obispo kay, kay Saint John of the uh, Chrysostom, the matron said, Bishop, one of your priests is a sinner. You should tell him to stop preaching. Ang mga basta mga doon yan, sa Constantinople, ay Bishop, hindi yung pare niya ini, na nag-preach dari sa isa sa mga simbahan, dari sa atong syudad, makasasala, kung tatana siya, sa preaching. Anong sabad, sa santo na obispo? Kung politiko ni obispo, siguro, gipauntat na ni. <laughs> oh, tata, oh, oh, oh. Pero it so happened that John Chrysostom was really a saint. And saints and politicians are, are far different species. Anyway, ano ba ni John Chrysostom? Salin niya sa mga matrons of the city. And let him be lang. Pabahiilan na siya kung mag... Pamati lang ka mo. Nga ah. Because the word of God... The word of God is a two-edged sword. Is a two-edged sword. It wounds those who are listening, but it also wounds the one who is preaching. Sila ni John Chrysostom, ispada ina. Ang tulong sa Diyos, ispada, nga may dua ang iyang edge. Hindi ko matranslate. Dua ang iyang talom. Every time the word of God is being preached, one of the side wounds the listener, but the other one of the other the other side also wounds the one preaching. It wounds both the one who listens and the one who preach. And as always, the word of God heals even as it wounds. That someday, sa sagay sige, proklamara sining ginaakusar ninyo nga makasasala, nga pare, sa pulong sa Diyos, eventually, He too will be converted as you who are listening are also converted. Then my dear friends, let's go back to that post and I'll close with this. Kung ang inyo pare, ang inyo pastor, ang inyo religious leaders, dira, nagatudlo nga magbuto kamo sa kawatan, then change your religion. How will you respond to it? Amen. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, 
and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear, Hear us, us Lord. Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray all together. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that we come, as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them that you fall so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your servant, Mother May Catherine of Christ, as she celebrates her birthday today. May you increase her faith, hope, and love and strengthen her with your wisdom. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Sebastian, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and Pedro Calongson, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, or oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you, who died for love of me. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed and to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Before I give my blessing, I would like to greet our dear Mother May. A happy birthday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.